tell you what setting we're in. We are in residential setting, townhouses, city of Coquitlam. Uh, our our uh, seniors home is just down there. Street story seniors home we're doing just up the block. Uh, but yeah, we're doing townhouses right now. So these are row townhouses. So these ones in particular are rows of five. I've done rows of three and rows of four. So couldn't really tell you which is most typical and traditional to put in, whether it's a five or a four or three. Um, but uh, let's get into the video. First of all, some honorable mentions. So that's the chalk line for the concrete. And uh, you got to be 24 inches below the concrete line for your for your water line uh we're talking about the mo lower mainland uh you're talking about cam loops that's three feet there so chances are it's a bylaw two feet and the drainage is uh 18 inches so that's just some honor honorable mentions of uh, how deep you have to be uh in order for frost level but uh i can't remember what the drainage is in cam loops but these sound like bylaws to me 24 inches for your water line because i kind of remember 36 but anyways honorable mention right uh so let's take a step back we're going to be looking at this unit today we're going to be looking at a couple things i think this kind of row of five or six here is got a couple different things you guys are really going to enjoy so first of all for apprentices this is a video for apprentices that's the staircase right there this little box out rectangle thing that's uh, their basement. So this person paid for the upgrade. It's an end unit. End units are usually handicapped or paid for an upgrade traditionally. So uh, let's uh, get into it. And uh, so an upgrade, obviously, they got a bathroom group down the stairs is what they paid for. You can also upgrade your shower valves. But when we say upgrade, generally we're talking about a bathroom group. So <laughs> uh, this is kind of not... In my opinion, this is not really traditional to have four uh, 45s wrapping around. It's more traditional because all these services poke up on 45s. So generally what we did was we just cut it down went, uh, and then we started turning. But generally you dig really deep, turn that 45 straight up and uh, then you would pick up a 90 and you could put that 90 any way you would want. So traditionally we would go... 90 45 right uh, uh so then we got a four by three that's ripping up here we're gonna look at that one right after just because this is quick so four by three why going that way uh obviously most uh preferred preference would be three by two four by three double why right here so you kind of i want to touch on that just to give you guys like what the preference of the code is okay so four by three right there we're doing another four by three right here uh so yeah you go straight bathroom group we go two two uh 45s right here and when we say no change in direction more than 45 degrees they let it slip a little bit more in residential so we got this toilet's going to serve those two 45s this comes off of a fitting, so it's not counted. Because if we just picked up our toilet right here, that would be considered no change in direction off of this 4x3Y there. Okay, so we go, couple 45s, toilet. You have to do your toilet first, and notice how well, we got the guys to set it here with this rebar here. So you toilet first, lav second. Lav, you're generally not within your eight feet when you're talking about a down a basement bathroom, uh, but you are <laughs> always going to be on the cusp of your six feet for your tub, okay? Now we just kind of go back here. Uh, so yeah, we kind of know what we did here and we just go straight 145 for this stack. Now, I left the stack for uh, last because let's say we did traditional installation rolled up with a 45 so it's shooting vertically pick up a 90 boom 145 typical almost every townhouse you'll come into will have another one more 45 to hit the stack and that's kind of it you know and that's really all you need to be traditional right so let's go into this room we ripped off with a four by three couple 45s jumped up a uh, couple turns with a couple 45s here and uh okay 
let's get into this three inch three inch stack goes up right second one kitchen kitchen's actually being vented by uh individual individual uh well it's just one of those cheater vents really and so because we have a cheater vent on there and it's a uh, the cheater vents meant for an individual fixture this uh kitchen is actually wet venting this floor drain which is if you get into it uh so what happened was the inspector showed up and uh what we decided with him was hey we don't have to keep it uh that that uh cheater vent because it's meant for individual if we continued that vent straight up then we would be eliminating the cheater vent and so that's what we did and that's what allowed the 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 kitchen to act as a wet vent for the floor drain so the reason I say wet vent is because the manner that we've tied this in. If we would have switched these two around, brought the kitchen in down here, and brought our uh, stack up there, provided it has five feet, um, then we would be, we would be, uh, obviously that stack goes through one or more stories. Uh, then we would be venting it properly because then the stack would be venting the floor drain and we wouldn't be worrying about uh, whether this floor drain has a vent or not or you know because potentially it could obviously with that cheater vent uh, it could suck it so it could suck that trap so you gotta you gotta be careful with what you're doing how you're tying things in you really got to think about it too you know and the kitchen honestly guys are thinking well this seems like really complicated now no it's not complicated kitchen is the only one you got to keep in mind for this kind of connection uh if you're an apprentice really if you have a stack you're tying in below there whatever you're fine usually okay so kitchen just keep that in mind don't get carried away thinking plumbing's hard it's not it's trust me it's all black and white okay so three inch bomb pan drain super typical right okay let's move into another unit all your services come up on a 45 degree angle so that would be kind of what it would look like then obviously we would yeah then we would cut it in 45 straighten out he did a big sweep here so then obviously we would rip our four by three up here if it was a traditional installation we were looking at so four inch stack you need more than five feet it's going two stories super easy uh this coming off on the same axis right floor drain pan drain boom boom super easy obviously off of uh this floor drain i'll just give you guys a look at that you just rip it off three by two and uh, we kind of talked about this in the drainage code when we did that presentation so uh, obviously we're not s trapping we're not going over 12 feet so super good uh, four inch coming straight we uh, jump up here for the bathroom group and then yeah three by two double to break it's three by two double okay so we got lav obviously hooked up his toilet first lav and then he went over for his shower okay and uh then we go straight and we have a bot uh so this actually doesn't need five feet this big huge snake here it's because and then it comes up in the garage which is a garage is not a heated space so <laughs> uh this is this one's just gonna pick up a, a powder room and a powder room means uh we're in the basement the uh, level one so right when you walk in your entrance whatever a little half bath there that's a powder room okay so super easy but yeah because it's just uh yeah we talked about it in the code for five feet or not five feet so let's get into uh this unit here now this guy uh chose to go on with a 90 on a 45 because obviously this is coming up at a 45 that uh, 90 there goes straight so that's that's one thing you could do provided that this wasn't bent in any way down you know maybe it's on a 22 maybe it's on a 45 and you're if it's on a 22 and it got you know bent some manner your inspector could he could probably call you for not not for the 90 not being 45 degrees because it got bent down right but uh 
we didn't I've never ran into that issue it's just in the back of my mind because I'm always uh, I'm always on alert here so let's uh, get into the easy stuff first obviously we went straight boom 145 right to our stack what did I tell you it's traditional okay okay four by three ripping off here boom couple 45 super easy rips around now what happened here the reason we're ripping back is the knockout got missed and we get into that kind of stuff in construction uh the knockout gets put in the wrong spot whatever okay <laughs> this goes straight uh yeah so let's talk about this for a sec uh so we had to have five feet for this stack right here this uh three inch girl she's gonna go straight up and uh she's gonna need five feet for this uh floor drain we had to keep in mind 135 and then we just went straight and obviously ripped right off right over to our pan drain so that's pretty easy uh some aspects of some characteristics and aspects about that one were typical such as our uh, 90 coming straight up 145 to our stack again 90 on a 45 okay now this one we're just going to kind of look back and observe just for the video we kind of get what we're looking at by now yeah obviously he's got a powder room over there right comes off on the same level floor drain uh, yep okay uh this one yeah so you start looking at this and you guys are going oh is this traditional well uh some inspectors accept this but some inspectors don't I'm telling you guys, just keep it traditional. You got a pipe coming out on a 45 right there. Dig her right down. Spend the time to dig it down. Put a 45 on it. Put a 90. Check that you're check that you're gonna be underneath that footing. That's important. You guys are gonna see this footing apprentices, and you guys are gonna know you guys gotta be underneath it, okay? So you just take a piece of rebar, whatever, make sure you're underneath it good for i like to be under it five eight inches so you get this gravel right here right away i know just to dig through two three inches into that i'll even go i actually i do traditionally three inches into that and that usually gives me about eight inches whatever at the end and what happens is you guys got to dig down make sure you guys get this right because what happens right over there every time you end up jump, jumping the water line you end up jumping over it you know so if you're not low enough or you're too high enough or you're too high you, you know you're gonna plumb yourself into a corner and that's kind of the object of the game not to do that so let's talk about traditional had we come up 90 on a 45 45 straighten out again 145 to our stack it's traditional <laughs> okay three inch jumps up uh, yeah and the same kind of deal here Okay. Again, is this traditional? No, it's not. 90, 45, straighten out, 145, hit your staff. Boom, we go jump up here. Super easy installation. And uh, let's look at this. Now I'm telling you guys, anytime. So this is a floor drain with a flat vent ripped off the top uh, to correct the S-trap. Uh, and there is a different preferred method for this. Uh, but just do whatever your boss tells you. But, uh, and it would, if, but if you're the foreman, uh, understand the inspector might not accept it in your, in your jurisdiction. And... Uh, I'm going to put a picture of the preferred method just to be uh, totally politically correct here. Uh, okay, now here we go. Here we go. This guy did dig down. Dug down 45, 90 up, 145, boom, another 45. Hits his 4 inch stack whatever goes three inch couple three inch 45s now this is the difference between residential and commercial so 
if you were doing commercial, you would go, you would need some clean out. So you would need a clean out right there for sure. But nobody wants to pop a clean out up through their living room floor or in the middle of their bathroom with that nub on it or whatever. It's just the tripping hazard. Looks ugly. Looks bad. It just, you know. So uh, that's why we they are letting us get away with more turns in this residential. But we do have good reasoning. I mean, well, what better way could we have done it, right? So, I mean, we're not here to think all day about it, but uh, what better way could we have done it is what our our kind of response to too many turns is right so we try to keep it as little turns as possible but residential they're gonna get you let you get away with one more 45 than commercial okay so that i'm trying to stop a couple 45s and uh yeah let's look at this one eh so this p-trap came off here obviously no vent doesn't need it uh and then we tied everything in yeah so this wouldn't need a vent so that's fine this two inch yeah that'll be fine too and then the three inch right through there right so the air really will take the path of least resistance but you know the floor drain doesn't need to be vented but if you start flipping your fittings you go tie the kitchen sink in down here now you are changing your configuration which was why the inspector said that's an individually vented thing don't be tying it in in here you got to tie it either upstream you got to do something else right okay so that's that's the lesson so let's just kind of go over it again five feet for your for your stack uh you got to ask, is this, uh, is this a stack that needs five feet or a stack that doesn't need five feet? And your foreman's going to start explaining, well, this goes up two stories, so yeah, it does. Picks up stuff on the second floor. Uh, oh, well, this stack over here, well, the powder room's a good example, the one we saw in the garage. But let's just pretend this one is uh, doesn't need five feet. If you said, oh, it's a powder room, it's going to pick up a level one half bathroom right above there, then that wouldn't need five feet. But that's not actually the case here. This one did need five feet, okay? So that's kind of just some lessons. Uh, obviously you need 18 inches on your uh, floor drain. Uh, you can pick up one fixture and one more fixture off this. Three is illegal. We went over that in the drainage code. Uh, we talked about what's traditional. And uh, yeah, these are the kind of caps that we use so we can reuse them, kind of save money. Okay, I've actually done it with these caps and putting duct tape around it and uh, passed, passed a huge groundworks without those caps leaking. I was kind of surprised with uh, duct tape and those caps. Okay, so um, another thing, when you fill, it'll all bubble over the lowest one and then you go around and slap caps on until you get to the highest point here, five feet. That's a bylaw. That's our bylaw. We already read in the code it needs three meters under, uh, oh, I can't remember right now anyways. Uh, yeah, so that's our five feet just because it's a bylaw. And uh, that's pretty cool. So let's kind of take a step back here and look at the groundworks. Perforated pipe running around the perimeter. I think I mentioned this before that it has holes in it. And that's gonna uh, take away your groundwater. So <laughs> start to look at the four units. Guys ask me, are you?